When you fly, you become a creature of the weather. Words like convective, wind shear, and turbulence find their way into your vocabulary. When we flight plan, we're taught to look at METARs for current weather and TAS for predictions. And maybe we've taken a gander at some common weather charts and pilot reports. But to stay safe on our flights, complete weather planning involves looking under the hood a little bit and getting familiar with the products and reports that the weather pros use. This is Dan from Flight Insight, helping out the AOPA Air Safety Institute with more videos in their Beyond Proficient series with an emphasis on how to operate more safely in the IFR environment. This one offers a few tips on using ForeFlight as a weather planning tool for IFR flights on warm days. We're walking up to our Cessna 172 on the ramp at Stevensville, Maryland, Bay Bridge Airport, Whiskey 2 Niner. It's a crummy day with light rain and low ceilings, but perhaps ideal to do an IFR flight up to Allentown, Pennsylvania. Pulling up ForeFlight, we can see it showing us on the ground at Bay Bridge. In this scenario, today is Wednesday as noted in the upper left part of the screen. Let's start by putting in our departure and destination airports, and we want to start filling in the blanks of the weather story for our flight. Let's zoom back into Bay Bridge and tap on it to bring up the airport details. If we tap the weather tab, we see the METAR, our current weather. It confirms marginal VFR conditions with a broken ceiling at just 1,500 feet. Can we wait until later for better conditions to take off? If we tap the TAF tab, we see that rain and low ceilings are forecast to stay with us at least through 6 o'clock in the evening. Let's look at our destination, Lehigh Valley International, Kilo Alpha Bravo Echo in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The current METAR shows better weather up there. The sky is clear and visibility is fine. It is windy there, as it also is here, so we might expect a bumpy ride the whole flight. A look at the TAF shows that VFR conditions should continue through the evening. So we're starting to get a sense that though we'll be departing into IMC, we should expect to get north of that into clearer weather somewhere along our route of flight. Let's fill in a few more gaps. If we tap the layers icon in the top left of the screen, we can overlay some more weather information. You could simply start at the top of the layers list and work your way down, but for this conversation, we'll start with flight category to get a bird's eye view of all the METARs across the region. And then we'll look at a few other layers, but we won't cover them all. Zooming out, we see colored circles on all the airports with functional METARs. Green means VFR, blue means marginal VFR, ceilings between 1 and 3,000, or visibility between 3 and 5 statute miles, and that's what we currently have at Bay Bridge. The area is colored red or IFR, and low IFR, which we don't see on this chart, is in magenta, meaning the ceilings are below 500 feet or the visibility is less than a mile. By looking at the whole area, we can see that the marginal conditions persist along the first half of the flight, where they lead into VFR areas all the way to Allentown. Keep in mind that this doesn't mean we'll be clear of clouds, just that at the surface, these VFR areas will have ceilings at least 3,000 feet high. Let's pull up another layer. This one is Pyreps. As we would expect, we see a number of Pyreps down in the area we're departing from, and few, if any, around the destination. Let's tap this one at BWI. A 737 observed the cloud bases at 1,700 feet, as well as light chop coming in on final for runway 10. This gels up with what we've seen so far. By the way, this is a good reminder that all of us as general aviation pilots that we should try to submit more PIREPs even when the weather's nice. PIREPs provide the most accurate, real-time snapshots of weather at our location and can significantly improve our situational awareness. Okay, back to our route. About halfway along our route at Newark, Delaware, we have a report of wind shear. This gives us a bit more confirmation that we should expect a bumpy ride today, at least at the lower altitudes. We could check air mets and sig mets here too. There's a very large air met for icing lying over the region, but it starts up at 13,000 feet, where we don't plan to cruise in our Cessna. And there's a convective outlook, which we're just barely on the north end of, starting at 2 p.m. through 6 p.m. It's currently about 12.30 p.m., as you can note in the upper left corner of the screen. There's also an air met for IFR conditions south of us in Virginia from 11 a.m. through 2 p.m. Let's look at radar now. ForeFlight uses NEXRAD, which is made up of 160 radar sites across the country. A radar image can show the location and intensity of precipitation like rain, snow, sleet, or hail. The heaviest precipitation lies to our west over Washington, D.C. and gets lighter the further north we fly. 
This again matches up with what we've seen in the other weather data so far. If we animate the weather radar like this, we can also get a sense of the direction and speed at which a certain cell of precipitation is moving. This is looping the last hour of radar returns ending with the timestamp shown below, showing a slow progression northward of the system. Remember that all NEXRAD weather displays are latent to some degree, meaning that the precipitation you're seeing is recent but not real-time. The picture we're getting is that the weather will be chasing us up north, which works to our advantage. It's also important to have a bailout direction in any flight, meaning a direction to fly to take you away from any dangerous weather. On this flight, the bailout direction is right in front of us. But should we be going the opposite way, we'd want our bailout direction to be behind us and to always make sure that we never let the weather get so bad in that direction that a bailout becomes infeasible. Radar is a great way of seeing where areas of precipitation are or have been just a short while ago. And by animating the returns, you get an idea of where they might be headed but they don't predict the future. Some weather products create a future radar picture, but this is generated by a model, not based on actual raw data. For prediction, it's still best to stick with the TAF and other forecast tools produced by NOAA meteorologists. Let's have a look at some other weather products to help with prediction. If we tap imagery at the bottom of the screen, we get a good number of charts from the National Weather Service. Let's start with the latest surface analysis, showing fronts and areas of low and high pressure. There's a low pressure system on the coast at the Virginia-North Carolina border, but no frontal activity along our route of flight. We can tap the right arrow at the bottom of the screen to advance the forecast surface analysis. This one is valid from 1800 Zulu today, the current Zulu time being 1630. Areas of precipitation are also shown which correspond to what we saw earlier on radar. We can advance it to see the progression of the fronts of precipitation. It'll slowly make its way up to Pennsylvania over the next day and a half. Let's have a look at the cloud coverage. The first chart is valid from 1800 Zulu. It shows what we can expect over the mid-Atlantic. Over Maryland, the overcast layer at 11,000 feet shows a top at flight level 220, while over Pennsylvania, there are just a few clouds at 4,000 with cirrus above. That looks like it'll pretty much hold true over the course of the next 12 hours. It's good to know the cloud bases and tops because we'd prefer not to stay in IMC too long, especially if icing were a concern but also just to relieve our workload. If we did have icing to worry about, we could look at the lowest freezing level chart, which color codes the altitude where we can expect to enter freezing temperatures. As we can see, it's not going to be a problem for our flight at these late spring temps, though aircraft that are able to climb higher and aren't equipped for flight and icing should take careful note. We can see cloud coverage by looking at satellite imagery. First, the visible satellite shows cloud coverage, but nothing about the layers themselves. Infrared imagery shows the temperature at the cloud tops, which we can combine with temperature aloft information to get a sense of the top's altitude. Those bluish colors over Maryland shows temperatures well below freezing at the tops, suggesting that they're up into the flight levels. So with this information, let's plan a route and altitude. We'll use ForeFlight's Route Advisor. It gives us an ATC cleared route, meaning one that was actually assigned to an aircraft, which takes us over Baltimore and then north and east. But this gets us closer to the higher intensity precipitation. There's another route based just off airways, which is to the east of the first one and avoids the really heavy stuff. That's probably the one that we want to go with. We don't have icing concerns, so we can fly as high as is feasible in our Cessna. 7000 is appropriate for an easterly flight and satisfies all the minimum IFR altitudes. It also might keep us above those winds we saw closer to the surface, and we might even find a corridor of VMC during the climb. Now, we're not planning to stay up in Pennsylvania forever. We're going to be making a return flight tomorrow. Let's look at how ForeFlight can help with some advanced flight planning instead of just aiding in a go-no-go -go decision at flight time. We've already looked at some tasks for Allentown, but they're valid only through 8 a.m. tomorrow. We can use the MOS, which stands for Model Output Statistics, to get a longer-term view. Though not an official forecast the way TAFs are, the MOS can provide a forecast even for airports that are far from where the official TAFs are created. We're seeing broken skies at 1500 with rain until 9 a.m. tomorrow, and then fully IFR conditions becoming low IFR after 2 p.m. That matches up with what we saw with the radar moving northward, and the imagery chart showing precipitation moving the same way over the next day or so. The earlier we depart, the better the weather would seem to be. Another great resource under the TAF tab is the forecast discussion. This is the plain English commentary by the actual forecaster who created the TAF. We're interested in the outlook, beginning with Thursday, which would be tomorrow in this scenario. 
It's showing the IFR conditions will be the result of low ceilings, with lower visibilities also possible as showers move through. Thunderstorms are possible south of ILG and ACY, that's Wilmington and Atlantic City, which are east of our flight route. Let's have a look at the same forecast discussion for Baltimore. We'll look to the discussion for Thursday, which shows marginal VFR with possible IFR and occasional showers. Given that this whole system, caused by that low pressure area that we saw sitting over the Virginia-North Carolina border, is moving north, it makes sense that we would see worse conditions for our departure tomorrow than for our arrival today. It looks like it'll make sense to leave as early as possible tomorrow morning, and of course we'll check the weather again before departing. It's certainly hard IFR, but if our personal minimums allow, it should be flyable. We can expand our forecast knowledge by going back to the imagery page and looking at the full array of prog charts, precipitation forecasts, convective outlooks, graphical forecasts, turbulence, and more to aid our go-no-go decision making. As proficient IFR pilots, we're comfortable flying in instrument weather conditions within our personal minimums, but it requires that our knowledge and understanding of weather is far more sophisticated than it was during private pilot training when the warning to just stay out of weather sufficed. By looking under the hood a bit at some of these weather planning tools in ForeFlight, and supplementing that planning with official sources of weather like a flight service briefing, we'll be able to incorporate more professional, thorough decision-making into all our flights.